What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master One and welcome to my analysis of the first summer banner that we're gonna be getting in Faye. And this one does include units from Fodlin and also Magvel. So we have got Summer Shez, which was kind of obvious from the silhouette that we saw. And she is a Sword Cavalier. And definitely, you know, one of the more powerful Sword Cavaliers because she does have the Swift Slice Slotty skill from her legendary version. Which means that she's going to be able to get the effective damage and she still has the Dual Face Brave weapon. Um, so that is really good. And it also gives her the Neo Trace effect and does give her plus 5 speed and she also gets true damage based on 20% of her speed so yeah summer shes is also gonna be really really strong and if you've seen you know legendary shes do anything basically summer shes is gonna be doing that at melee uh by being this kind of sword cavalier so she's definitely gonna be really good and she also brings a new tier 4 skill to the table in loud speed defense 4 which is not the most insane but it's still pretty functional so it can inflict speed and defense debuff on foe depending on 4 plus the total bonus status that is active on foe and this could go up to max 8. Um, so this is definitely helpful especially when you face um, you know god swords or any kind of units with bonus status like bonus doubler from legendary Elliewood or any of those positive status basically so it does punish any of that and it is something that brave chrome is definitely not going to be lacking facing against. So not the most insane skill but still pretty useful because we do see a lot of visible status nowadays and this is definitely going to be helpful um, against those units and especially useful in something like Aether Raid's defense. And then Summer Shez also has attack defense menace. I kind of wish that she had like attack speed menace because that would have gone well with her swift slice so that she could get uh, maybe more speed debuff on the opponent to trigger the speed check. Uh, but nonetheless she's definitely going to be really strong. Now uh, with this kind of weapon and the effective damage and the stats that you get out of this slice. So here she's just going to be triggering her glimmer and absolutely destroying this green flyer. And then we move on to Summer Ephraim. Now Summer Ephraim is going to be such a unique unit because of his sloppy skill. And he's an amazing Axe Cavalier. So Summer Ephraim is going to be uh, shown here as you can see. He does get the plus one movement so massive range which is really good. And we also see his stats right there. So he is pretty min-max, he has got very low speed, but pretty good defense, very high defense and really high attack. In fact, the highest attack in the game at base 47 and has decent enough resistance at base 31 in case he takes any kind of damage from a dragon unit. So Summer Ephraim's combat is going to be shown here and we can see all of his stats and skills. So he has got Sea Foam Splitter which does give him minus on special cooldown and at start of turn if any of the allies adjacent to him are less than or equal to 2 then he's able to get plus 1 movement. So that is very important. We have seen this kind of effect before on the Alarm skill and on Noah as well. Getting extra movement is just amazing if you know Brave Seliff was any kind of indication or legendary seeker. So having this plus 1 movement is really good as a cavalier. And then at start of combat, if his HP is at or above 25%, he can inflict minus 6 attack and defense debuff on the opponent and also gets these special charges on both enemy's attacks and his own attacks. So this means that with the forced foe's first attack that he does with his lobby skill, he's going to be able to retaliate back with bonfire and I'm going to be talking more about that later on. So yeah, the special charges are really good and then he can also reduce the damage from foe's first attack by 40%. Now, the craziness does not end there for Summer Ephraim and I think that he becomes, you know, much, much more unique because of this sloppy skill in Sunlight Bangle. So if the number of allies adjacent to him is less than or equal to 1, then he can inflict minus X attack and defense debuff on the foe. And this X is basically 4 plus the number of spaces moved by whoever initiated. So basically, the clash effect in a sense, and this can go all the way up to max 8. So he can shred a lot of attack on the opponent and actually be really bulky on the physical side uh, with the defense that he has got and then he also gets the dual phase brave effect as long as the condition is met and whenever he deals any kind of damage in the combat he heals up 7 hp so that does help him with his self sustain and he also has in the player phase the forced foe's first attack so we have seen like forced desperation on goto and brave ike but never really something like this before where you pretty much force the opponent to attack first even when you're going to be attacking them in your player phase. So this pretty much helps him trigger bonfire on his hits and he doesn't really have guaranteed follow up attack but having the brave effect is a lot better because many times guaranteed follow up attacks are just going to be getting negated by the fast null follow up enemies. 
So having the Brave Effect is much, much better. And having this kind of forced foes first attack, he's going to be able to retaliate back with Bonfire and do a lot of damage and even trigger stuff like Ignis and Gale Force rather easily because of the, uh, you know, charges that he can get out of his weapon. So definitely a very powerful unit and really good unit because of the Thought Beast skill, which can make him unique and makes him hit really hard. And he also has a 40% damage reduction on foes first attack. So keep that in mind because he's going to be really bulky uh, with that force foes first attack because he shreds a lot of attack, gets the damage reduction, has high defense, and uh, is generally going to be able to do a lot of damage with that bonfire with his high defense. He also has alarm attacks defense, which is going to be really helpful for many of these slower uh, cavaliers. They can definitely try and run this um, and have something else in their slot B, like guard maybe, or you know just some kind of other skill, maybe tier 4 lull skill um, for lull attack defense whenever you get that. So that is going to be an option. And here we see Forced Foe's first attack uh, in the action as this Axe Fighter actually attacks Ephraim first, even though Ephraim was initiating. And then because of the, uh, you know, forcing of this enemy to attack first, you're going to be able to charge up your bonfire and retaliate back with a bonfire that does so much damage. And you can even run Ignis on him to do even more damage out of his high defense. So that is going to be Summer Ephraim. And now we move on to the four star focus unit of this banner, which is going to be Summer Lara Shell. So Lara Shell was also present on the silhouette and was fairly easy to guess. And she is a flying healer this time. So a flying healer is really unique and she comes with Blade Session. So maybe she is secretly from Tokyo Mirage Sessions and we finally got a Tokyo Mirage Session character after all. So Blade Session is definitely pretty nice on the slot A as a budget skill. Uh, that he could get out of this demote and of course wrathful staff is going to be the highlight here as you can get that and also earth wind bomb plus which does give you plus six speed and defense uh whenever you heal your ally and the special is charged up and then we see her inner double staff which in my opinion is going to be the best inner double staff until we get some kind of arcane staff so at start of turn it does inflict guard status on the nearest foes within five spaces and then it extends its range to two spaces of those foes if those foes do have any kind of safe skill equipped. So basically it can extend to the back line of the team if the back line of the team has some kind of save unit which is definitely helpful and then you can get plus 5 attack and speed in the combat based on the HP threshold and you can also inflict minus X resistance on foe in the combat depending on the total visible status be it positive or negative visible status effects on the foe multiplied by 4 and this can go all the way up to minus 16 resistance debuff. So this is really good because you're going to be inflicting them with the guard status. So that is one status that is going to be affected on them. And if you inflict even more status effects on them or if they just have some bonus status like bonus doubler, canto, you know, stuff like that, null panic from Legend Eliwood, then you're going to be able to inflict a lot of debuffs on them on the resistance side of things. So this is a really good staff because it can be helpful in Rooker's Siege as you inflict the guard effect at start of your turn so you don't even have to attack and that can be a really good support option for many of the healers then you also get the offenses which is really good for a modern healer if they are fast and you can also do more damage because of the resistance debuff that you get based on the total visible uh, status on the enemy so Laura Shell fans are going to be trying to pull her and she's probably going to be having like top tier offenses because Saul Despite being a 3 star 4 star healer has like amazing offenses so I expect nothing less from Summer Lara Shell at this point. And then we have got the star of this banner Duo Shamir with Catherine. So this is a very popular ship for many people and um, she is going to be doing a lot of damage as a blue bow cavalier. So I'm really happy that we actually have a blue bow cavalier and not another green bow cavalier because we just have so many of them. So here we can see their stats and uh, you know they do have pretty good you know offenses at base 43 attack and also base 46 speed. Base 46 speed being really really good and we actually see a new status effect in discord. Uh, as you can see not the discord you know but this is a different discord effect. Uh, so this is inflicted on the screenbow fighter as we can see and then Shamir is going to be initiating combat and now we can see all of their skills. So. Um, they do get partnership bow which gives them minus some special cooldown and it is going to be inflicting discard status and the panic status on the nearest foes within five spaces of Shamir and then within two spaces of those foes. So it does have a pretty amazing splash effect which is going to be able to make it pretty easy for you to uh, panic them and also affect them with the discard status. 
So the new Discord status pretty much inflicts a Spectrum minus X on the foe during the combat. And this X is going to be affected by 2 plus the number of allies within 2 spaces of that unit. Um, so this is going to be maxed up to like 5 debuff, which is really good for the stat swing basically. And they can have some insane stat swings because they can inflict speed and defense debuff on the foe depending on the visible status on the foe. And again, this is kind of similar to Summer Laura Shell's weapon. So it doesn't matter if you have a positive status or a negative status on your unit. It's all the same as this is going to be used and then multiplied by 4 and max 16 debuffs could be obtained. So that is insane stat swing when it comes to the speed. So this is basically going to be helpful in Ether Raid's defense where you do face a lot of god swords that do uh, just put a lot of visible status on their units like with Grand Strategy, with uh, Legend Ellie Woods, Null Panic, Kanto 1, Bonus Doubler. All of those effects are going to be helpful in just absolutely shredding the opponent's speed and defense with this kind of effect. So it is really really helpful um, in just swinging the stats in your favor, especially in terms of the speed. And if any kind of bonus or penalty is active on the foe, then you can get the offensive half of the tempo effect, which is basically null guard. And you also get the half version of null follow up so that you can bypass the follow up negation effects. So it is going to be pretty helpful and pretty easy to get these two effects at the end because you're going to be inflicting them with the panic and the discord status. So it, it really is not that hard to get the half tempo and half null follow up out of their weapon, which is going to be really adding to their offensive prowess. And like I said, this is an Aether Raid's defense unit through and through and really punishing any kind of god swords or really any kind of omni tank that tries to stack up any kind of status effects. So something like in the light season, even the debuff neutralization status or Goto's uh, AoE damage reduction can actually come to bite you back because they're going to be able to swing the stats because of the effect built in this weapon. So you definitely have to watch out for Duo Shamir, especially if you're a big God Sword fan. And then they have Deadeye, which is perfect so that they can pierce through the damage reduction. Um, again, this is not going to be triggered against Lucia, but they do have enough stat swing to outspeed, you know, Lucia. Because Lucia doesn't really get as much speed as Ascended Fur or like Lear. Um, so I'm pretty sure like Shamir can outspeed Lucia's and still do a ton of damage to any kind of God Sword Lucia that tries to stack up a lot of stats. And then they've got Remote Sparrow and also the tier 4 version of Brash Assault 4. So Brash Assault 4 only works in the player phase and uh, at sort of combat if your HP is not at full and if you're in the player phase or if foe's HP is at full and you initiate in the player phase then it inflicts minus 4 defense and resistance on the foe and reduces damage from foe's first attack by 30% and also lets you get a guaranteed follow-up attack and the next attack is basically going to be doing you know damage that you have reduced so it's kind of like Hans and Nyx in a way so you pretty much have this kind of damage reflection and that is going to be really helpful in killing the opponents because you can soak up a lot of damage because of the damage reduction from Remote Sparrow and Brash Assault 4 and by having this kind of damage reduction you can pretty much do even more damage on your next attack by reducing the damage. So Brash Assault 4 is really unique skill that we have seen and it does have amazing synergy with Remote Sparrow that they already come with. And then they also have Fatal Smoke, so just in case if you're using Saline or any kind of healing uh, on your units, that's not going to be working in Aether Raid's defense. And again, like I said, this is an Aether Raid's defense unit to kill all those God Swords and those annoying Omni Tanks that your team might be facing. So definitely a very powerful unit and also is going to be really useful in Summoner Duels uh, for taking on a lot of threats. And even if they don't really kill something directly, they're still going to be supporting your team by inflicting the Discord and the panic status on the enemies and just splashing them with that. So yeah, a top tier nuke for sure, which is obviously expected out of the Star of the Banner. And their duo skill is also going to be helpful in something like Summoner Duels. So they inflict the gravity status in the cardinal direction and also the feud status on the foes within 5 rows and 5 columns centered on Duo Shamir. So that's a pretty big effect and the feud status is really helpful especially when we have stuff like Fallen Maria now. So I think we're just going to be seeing feud status even more now because of how good Fallen Maria is and especially in summoner duels. Like Fallen Maria is really really solid. Um, so yeah, duo skill is really helpful in summoner duels despite it being pretty simple. Um, all things considered and the gravity effect is definitely pretty nice for stopping the advancing of your enemies especially in the cardinal direction as we can see here so that is going to be duo shamir excellent unit and excellent nuke and we are also going to be having a tempest trial unit in male chez 
as we can see it is gonna be another lance flyer but this is um i'm gonna be hoping like he has like a weapon similar to summer laura shell at the very least because that would be pretty unique because flyers can only have access uh to you know so many of these skills but with guard bearing four and guidance four if uh, you know this kind of male shez does have good enough stat spread then he might be a pretty nice investment for the people who really like shez uh so yeah summer shez as a lance flyer is going to be the free to play unit this time around and uh, this banner is overall pretty good uh with really strong nukes with uh, stuff like summer shez and obviously duo shamir and a very unique unit in duo ephraim so let me know what you think about this banner in the comment section down below i'll be eager to hear that and i hope you all enjoyed this video if you did then make sure to leave a like and a comment helps you tremendously and if you really really enjoyed you could always support me directly by using super thanks down below or by becoming a youtube member and for more free videos make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because youtube sub boxes are about as functional as god swords against duo shamir so with that i'll see you guys next time thank you so much for watching and have a great day